Hi there. In today's lecture, we're going to be going over the second part of parametric curves. So you have gone over the first part already in the previous semester. So we're going to be extending that uh, with part two now. So a quick recap of what parametric curves are and what we use them for is that we can imagine we've got some space. Okay, it doesn't have to be 2D, it can be any dimension, uh, but we can imagine that there is some particle moving in the space and it's moving along some path or some trajectory uh, with some velocity. Okay, let's say V. At any time, we know exactly where the particle is because it's going along this path. So it may be at this point, x, y, at some time, t. So given any time, we know where it is, we can build some function to describe the position. So the x part of the position, we can say is some function of time, say f of t, and the y part of the position may be some different function, g of t. If you substitute any time t, you will get the x and the y, and that will tell you where the particle is. Uh, if you want to find the velocity, you can take the time derivative, and that will give you that velocity vector there. Okay, but that was done previously. What we're going to look at now is finding the distance traveled by the particle. In other words, the length of the path taken by the particle over some time interval, uh, that will be the first thing, and the second thing is finding the area enclosed by a given parametric curve. Okay, so for the first part, we want to find the length of a parametric curve. Okay, so we're going to continue with this particle analogy uh, by first writing down what we know about the uh, speed or velocity of the particle. So in one dimension, we can write down the speed or, or the velocity as delta x over delta t. In some small time step delta t, the particle moves some little bit delta x in space, um, and then that gives us the velocity. A little bit of rearranging here, we see that delta x is equal to v delta t. So given the velocity and given the little time step, we can calculate how far the particle traveled. Okay, and we're going to be using this as our inspiration to find the length of the parametric curve. Okay, so just for simplicity, we're going to work in two dimensions, uh, but this applies to, to any number of dimensions. Okay, so uh, this V as delta X over delta T, if we're working with calculus, uh, this is not going to be delta X over delta T, it's going to be the derivative DX by DT. So we note that by x dot, that's just a notation that we use for dx by dt, and similarly y dot is dy by dt. So these are the two components for the velocity. We've got the velocity in the x direction, the velocity in the y direction. We can write these together using a triangle, so right angle triangle along the horizontal, we have x dot along the vertical, we have y dot, and then the hypotenuse, that is going to be the overall speed. In other words, you add the horizontal and vertical parts together, and you get the total. Okay, it's like the vector addition from high school. Okay, so the hypotenuse, or the length of the hypotenuse, that will be x dot squared plus y dot squared. Okay, that's v. Okay, yeah, so we've got the velocity. Now imagine an infinitesimal amount of time going by, so not delta t, but dt. In that case, the particle is going to move a tiny bit dl. That will be v dt, or 
um, in our case here, x dot squared plus y dot squared dt. Okay, but this is in an infinitesimal, am infinitesimal amount of time. If we want to know the distance traveled over an interval of time, we can just integrate up the individual steps. So L will be the integral from A to B in terms of a time interval, integral from A to B, integral from A to B. Okay, and then this is A is less than or equal to T, less than or equal to B. That is our time interval. So given some uh, function uh, of T for both X and Y, we can calculate this, and that gives us the length of the curve. Okay, so I'm just going to go through one example just to show you the mechanics of the calculation. Uh, then please have a look at the tutorial questions. Uh, there are plenty more examples uh, for you to go through. Okay, so let's say x is equal to t cosine t, and y is equal to t sine t. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of both of these to get the x dot and the y dot. So x dot, okay, we're going to have to do the product rule, because we've got the product of the t and the cos t. So that's going to be cos t minus t sine t. And similarly for y dot, we're going to get sine t plus t cos t. Okay, then we can calculate that uh, root expression over there. So the square root of x dot squared plus y dot squared, that's going to be the square root. It's going to be quite a bit. x dot, that's going to be cos t minus t sine t squared. And y dot sine t plus t cos t squared. Okay, so this looks like it's going to get very complicated, uh, but quite a few terms will cancel, uh, other terms will be combined, and in the end we will have something that is quite uh, simple to work with. So this is going to be the square root. Okay, we're going to have quite a bit for this line. So we're going to have cos squared t minus 2t sine t cos t plus t squared uh, sine squared t. Okay, it's going to have to extend this a bit more. Plus sine squared t plus uh, 2t sine t cos t. And finally, plus t squared cos squared t. Okay, so this looks uh, quite complicated, but it's not so bad. The minus 2t sine t cos t, that's perfectly cancelled by 2t sine t cos t. Okay, one with the minus, one with the plus, we can get rid of those. Next, the cos squared and the sine squared, that can be added together to give us 1. So this will be the square root. Cos squared t plus sine squared t. Okay, we can combine that. Uh, then the other terms. So plus t squared sine squared t plus cos squared t. Okay, uh, that bit is left over for the other parts. Okay, cos squared plus sine squared, that's just going to be uh, 1. And same for the other part, sine squared plus cos squared, that will also be 1. So we end up with 1 plus t squared. Okay, so from something that looks quite a bit complicated, we get something that's fairly simple. Okay, so we've got the speed. Uh, now we need to know the time interval. And then we can use that to calculate the length. So let's say this goes from 0 to 1. OK, 
Okay, so I will just set up the integral. Um, I'll give you a little hint how to solve it, and then you can do the rest for homework. Okay, so the length, that will be the integral from 0 to 1. Uh, the speed, that's the square root 1 plus t squared dt. Okay, uh, now if you remember back to when you did trig substitution and trig integrals, uh, this should be fairly familiar. So remember, you had three different cases that you worked with. a squared plus x squared, a squared minus x squared, x squared minus a squared. Okay, remember you had the three cases and you did something uh, for each of them. So you had a sine substitution for one of them, you had a tan substitution for something else, and so on. Uh, for this one, it is something like a squared plus x squared, right? 1 squared plus t squared. So um, I won't spoil what you need to do there, but it's one of the trick substitutions. Uh, once you do the substitution, uh, the rest is quite easy. Okay, but if you do need uh, to revise that, please look at the playlist um, on integration and then you can go through that. Okay, so on YouTube, um, all of those lecture videos are uh, titled nicely. Just find the one on trig substitution. Okay, there's a couple there. Okay, but that is for homework. Okay, so homework, evaluate the integral. Okay, but uh, for all of these types of problems, the setup is exactly the same. So you give an x, y, and the time interval. So let's just write that here. So you give in all of this. Okay, you calculate your x dot, you calculate your y dot, you calculate your speed. So that's the square roots of x dot squared plus y dot squared. Uh, simplify as much as you can and then you calculate the integral. Okay, so not many steps, uh, just a note for these integrals. You may need to do a trig substitution, um, and then once that is done, you may get a, um, a maybe complicated trig integral. Okay, so that just depends on how the x dot and y dot um, end up being, uh, but just note that that may come up. Okay, so if you do need to revise your trig substitution and your trig integrals, please do that because it may come up. Okay, uh, like in this case here. Okay, so that is the first thing for this lecture, finding the length of a parametric curve. The second thing that we're going to be going through is finding the area um, underneath the parametric curve and the area enclosed by a parametric curve. Okay, so number two, area under a parametric curve. Okay, so we begin with what we know, finding the area under a normal curve, y equals f of x, and then we will translate what we know uh, to this new way of thinking. Okay, so what do we know? We've got some curve, some function. We would like to find this area here. How do we do that? Well, remember back to the Riemann sums, we form a rectangle with heart y, with delta x, and then the area is given by the integral over the domain there. Um, just to keep it general, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna write that, but this will be y dx. Okay, that would be the area underneath the curve. However, in our case, we're not given y as a function of x, we're given a parametric curve, y in terms of t and x in terms of t.
Okay, so sometimes we will write y of t and x of t, other times we may give them other function names like f of t and g of t. So we could also write f of t, sorry, that's an x, g of t. And you might see that um, online if you're looking there. Okay, so how do we translate this into what we have? Well, we're looking for y, that's already given, so that's fine. What about dx? Well, we're given x, we know how to find differentials, that's just like a u substitution. So, if x is equal to g of t, then dx, just thinking about this like a u substitution, is going to be g prime of t, dt. Now, we have everything in terms of t. We have y in terms of t, and we have dx in terms of t. So, everything is in terms of t. We can then evaluate the integral. So, the area is equal to the integral from a to b. Remember, that is the time interval, or t interval. The y, that is f of t. And the dx, that's g prime of t dt. So that is looking at the area below the curve and above the x-axis. Uh, if we were interested in finding the area, uh, let's say something like this, and we wanted the area uh, not necessarily below the curve anymore, but between the curve and the y-axis, uh, we don't need to change this that much. We just need to think a little bit differently here. So now the height of the rectangle will be x, and the width of the rectangle will be dy. Okay, so in this case, the area will be the integral x dy. We know how to translate that to parametric form. So here, the area will be the integral from a to b. Remember that is t coordinates, so starting at t equals a, ending at t equals b. x, that's going to be g of t, and dy, that's going to be f prime of t. dt. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at a quick example, and then we will move on to finding the area enclosed by a parametric curve. Okay, so example, we have x is equal to 2t squared, and y is equal to 1 minus t. Okay, so we've got t going from 0 to 1. This will trace out some curve. We want to find the area below the curve and above the x-axis. So we know that we're looking at this first case the integral y dx. So let's do that. So the area is equal to the integral. Uh, our bounds are t bounds, so that's from 0 to 1. y, that stays the same, just 1 minus t. And dx, that's going to become 4 times t dt. Okay, that's just taking the derivative there. So we can expand this out. We get the integral from 0 to 1 for t minus 4t squared dt. Then, uh, doing the integration, so 4t uh, divide by 2, add 1 to the exponent, so that will become 2t squared minus divide by 3, add to the exponent, so that will be 4 over 3t cubed from 0 to 1. If we substitute 0, we don't get anything, so we don't have to worry about that. If we substitute 1, we're going to get 2 minus 4 over 3. So we can write that as 6 minus 4 over 3. So that will be 2 over 3. Okay, so now um, this is an area, so you may want to write the units of area. Okay, so if you're a physics student, you may want to get into the habits of always including your units. Uh, but for this module, since it's just a math module, 
uh, you don't need to do that. But if you do want to put some units just uh, to keep the habit, then that's fine with me. Okay, so you can write like meter squared if you want to. Okay, um, so this is finding the area below the curve and above the x-axis. You'll do something very similar if you wanted to find the area between the y-axis and the curve. Okay, then you would use that second formula we went through. Now, if you want to find the area enclosed by a curve, let's say it looks something like this. Oops, let's make that a little bit neater. Okay, maybe we have a parametric curve looking like this here. Okay, we want to find this area enclosed. What we can do is separate this into two parts, and then using either of those equations we had before, find the area in the parts, add them together to get the full area. So what I mean by that is we can find this top area, okay, the orange highlighted part. We can find the area of the top part, we can find the area of the bottom part, and add it together. Because if we're just dealing with the top part, that's the same thing as finding the area below a curve and above the x-axis. Okay, so if we're not given any t uh, values, so how do we know where to start and where to stop? Uh, here, it's not so bad to find out. It's going to be this point and this point. So let's call that point C and point D. How do we find the t values corresponding to C and D? Well, we know what the function um, looks like for y. So we know y is equal to uh, f of t. x is given by g of t, something like that. Okay, whatever those functions may be. If we're trying to find those x-intercepts, we should let y be 0. Okay, we let y be 0. That gives us the x-intercepts. So we take whatever function of y we're given, we set that equal to 0, and we solve for t. Solve for t. And those will be the endpoints, c and d, for that top portion that we're considering. So let's say that is T1 and T2. Okay, so how do we find the area? Well, this is symmetric, so the top and bottom are the same. So we just need to find the top part area, times it by 2, and that will be the full area. Okay, so this will change from problem to problem, uh, but do look out for those symmetries. It will help quite a bit. So the area is equal to 2 times the integral from t1 to t2. Since this is between the curve and the x-axis, we're going to use the y dx formula. So that will be f of t, g prime of t, dt. Okay, so in general, we follow the same sort of principle. We look at the complicated region. We break it up into simpler regions find the individual areas, and then add them up. Okay, that will give us the total more complicated area. Okay, uh, and again, please look through the tutorials for more examples on this. Okay, the final thing that we're going to look at uh, for this lecture and for parametric curves is finding the surface area of a uh, volume by rotation. Okay, so that's the third thing. Finding surface area. Okay, so please don't mix these up. So previously we looked at finding the area of a region. That's just a flat space region. Uh, here when we're looking at the surface area, 
it may be some strange looking volume. Okay, we want to find the surface area of that volume. Okay, so the surface area is different to region area. Please don't mix those up. Okay, so what do I mean by uh, volume of rotation? So let's say we've got ourselves a parabola. It is y equals x squared. Now imagine this being made of like a wire. We're going to rotate this around the y-axis. And this wire is going to trace out uh, some sort of uh, 3D shape. Okay, so just imagine this rotating. What kind of shape does this produce? Okay, so after imagining that, we end up with the following. We end up with a bowl kind of shape, parabolic uh, bowl or paraboloid. Okay, and that's the shape we get. Okay, so again, just imagine the uh, curve being rotated around the axis, and that will give us some kind of shape. Now, previously, you would have looked at finding the volume of such a shape, but now we're interested in this surface area part. Okay, so we're not interested in the inside part, just the outside surface area. Okay, so how do we calculate such a thing? So first, uh, as with many uh, calculus problems, we're going to break this up into small parts and then add the parts together. So imagine we take this uh, cup and we cut this from it. So we cut in front there, we cut around, and we end up with this band going around. Okay, so we do a, a two horizontal cuts and we end up with this band. Now we take this band and we cut it vertically and we unroll it. So this band that goes around will now become a strip. Okay, uh, the little heart of the strip we're going to call DS. And that is going to be this little length segment along like that. So if we just imagine here, we go around again. That's this little length over here. Okay, and then this goes around like that. Okay, so that's DS. Uh, what about the length of the strip? Well, the length of the strip is going all the way around in a circle. Right, because we rotated this in a circle, the boundary is going to be a circle. The circle has a perimeter of 2 pi r. Okay, so the perimeter of the circle becomes the length of the strip. Now, what is the radius? Remember, we said it was 2 pi r. What's the radius? The radius is the distance from the y-axis to the end of the circle. It's going to be this bit. But if we just look at this projected down here, that is just x. So if we go from the y-axis out to the end of the parabola, that distance is x. So the radius is x, which means the perimeter is 2 pi x, which means the length of the strip is 2 pi x as well. So, what's the area of the strip? The area of the strip is going to be 2 pi x times ds, where ds is the little uh, length portion over there. Okay, uh, but we don't want to work with ds. We'd rather work with uh, the parametric form of the curve. So, here we were given the curve as y equals x squared, but what happens if we're given the curve parametrically? Okay, so parametric form, we're given y is f of t and x is g of t. 
how do we find that little length segment there? Well, let's zoom in here. We're going to just imagine a little magnifying glass. So we're going to zoom in on that portion. What do we get? We get the side of the parabola is a bit slanted, okay, because obviously it's curved. Uh, but if we zoom in a lot, we can imagine it being flat. So very, very close, we get this flat portion. Okay, and then we can just extend this into a triangle. So from some points on this left-hand side, uh, we move across dx. Uh, vertically, we move up dy. And the hypotenuse is ds, um, as, we, as we stated previously. So, a little bit of Pythagoras, ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Uh, we can write this using this parametric form. So we can take uh, derivatives here. So dx, again, like we had before, uh, imagine like a u substitution. We're trying to find that du. We want that differential. So ds squared we can write as x dot squared dt squared plus y dot squared dt squared. Okay, if that's a bit confusing, please go back to the u substitution uh, to see how we found differentials. Okay, a little bit of uh, manipulation and simplification. We get ds is the square root of x dot squared plus y dot squared dt. Okay, we saw that before when we were looking at the length of a curve. Okay, so this is two ways of imagining the length of a curve. We can use that particle analogy where we look at the speed, uh, integrate up the tiny steps, and that gives us the length. Or we can imagine the curve as being made up of uh, lots of tiny straight lines uh, with each little bit being ds. Okay, we add up all the little bits and we get the total length. Okay, so that's just two ways of looking at the same thing. Okay, uh, both ways are equivalent. It's, it's up to you how you would like to think of uh, what to do. Okay, uh, let's have a look at what to do next. So we've got ds here. We've got this portion. We've got the length, we've got the little width, uh, we know the area of that, and that is just for one little portion. If we wanted to know the total surface area, we just uh, add up all the little bits, okay, as we did previously with the Riemann sums. Okay, so adding up all of these little uh, cylinders or little strips, uh, we get the full surface area. Okay, so you can imagine here, uh, we've got lots of these strips uh, going around here. Okay, we're adding all of them up. Okay, so the total surface area S, that's the integral from A to B, 2 pi X, that is the length of the strip or the circumference of that circle. Then we have the square root of x dot squared plus y dot squared dt. So this is if we rotate around the y-axis. Okay, so this was just for the, for the demonstration, but you can do exactly the same thing for rotating around the x-axis, but in that case, uh, the only thing you change is that the radius is no longer the x distance, uh, but the radius is now the y distance. So very, very small change. We have s is equal to the integral from a to b, 2 pi y, remember that's in terms of t, square root x dot squared plus y dot squared dt. And again, this is for uh, rotate around the x-axis. Okay, so it's a little, little bit odd. OK, 
here, but if you know where the formula comes from, uh, you won't get confused. So you rotate around y-axis, we use x. Rotate around x-axis, we use y. Okay, so if you don't know where these formulae come from, you might get confused. But if you know where they come from, you know that the x represents the radius going around the y-axis. And y, that will be the radius if we go around the x-axis. Okay, so please don't mix them up. Okay, so... Uh, we will leave it at this for today. Uh, please go through the tutorials, so they will have many examples uh, for you to go through. Okay, the solutions will be available after the tutorial. Okay, so I like to post the solutions after the tutorial, um, just so that you have plenty of time to try it out for yourself, um, and uh, not have that temptation of looking at the solution. Because if you look at the solution, it might seem obvious, like, oh, of course it's that. Um, and you, you might think to yourself that you know how to get it. Uh, but if you actually sit down and work at it, maybe do it a couple of times if you make mistakes, um, that's a lot better than looking at the solution right away. Okay, so even if you have to do it a couple of times, uh, rather put in the time to do that than just looking at the solution and thinking to yourself um, wrongly that you know what to do. Okay, um, so this module will have a lot of work. Okay, so a lot of examples in the tutorials, a lot of work to do, uh, but hopefully uh, it's not so bad. Okay, but as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. I will try and respond as soon as possible. If you have a short question, you can come to my office. I should be available. If you have a longer question that might take maybe 15 minutes to go through, uh, please rather email me to make a booking, and then I can make sure that I have enough time for you. Okay, but if it's just a quick problem, uh, please just stop by and I can help you out. Okay. Um, I've already had a few students come through, which is great to see. Okay, I will see you next time.